Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Wellness Blueprints. I am Jess Milner, and I'm so glad you're here to nourish your roots with me. So today, I want to talk a little bit about some of the flavors of the fall and how they actually have a purpose, like nature did this on purpose. So uh, we just had the first day of fall the other day. Um, temperatures are starting to drop. I mean, even where I am, it's you know still in the 80s and beautifully sunny today. But those cooler temps are on their way. They've already arrived in a couple of places. And um, so we have, you know, what most people would kind of refer to as pumpkin spice. There's different spices that are very common this time of year and some different foods and everything. And there's a reason why uh, these things are utilized so much during this time of year and um, what, you know, why we're sort of more drawn to them. Um, obviously, not everybody's drawn to pumpkin spice, and that's okay. Uh, but, you know, the individual spices that are used are often used in many different things throughout this season. And uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that because there is a method to the madness of this nature. So, and, and when we eat seasonally, our health is much, much better. So <clears throat> I, um, I apologize. My voice is like a little bit um, hoarse today. You know, I was away all weekend with my mom and my sister um, traveling and, um, you know, I don't feel sick or anything, but um, I just kind of like, I feel like I sound like I've been yelling a lot and I haven't, like you can ask my kids. I haven't even been like super crazy screamy mom or anything, but anyway. Okay. So there is an absolute reason why we are more drawn to these things and why they've always been traditional um, ingredients and um, and dishes, you know, throughout history. Obviously, depending on what type of the world, uh, what part of the world you're from, because the seasons are going to be different um, depending on where you are. So, you know, I mean, where, you know, I'm here in North America. Um, I'm in Idaho, uh, you know, so even in like the warmer parts of this country, um, people tend to still kind of gravitate towards uh, some of the fall dishes and stuff, even in places like Florida and Texas and California, Arizona, where, you know, it's certainly not getting very cold in a lot of those areas. So, uh, but this, these spices uh, that are often associated with pumpkin spice, you know, they are uh, warming to your body. So things like cinnamon and nutmeg and clove, um, even ginger, cardamom, you know, these are, they have a warming effect on the body. So of course, as the temperature starts to drop, you want to nourish your body with foods that are going to be more warming and nourishing in that manner, of course. So these kinds of spices are used in many dishes and we go for, you know, soups, stews, um, just, you know, you know, um, uh, maybe more roast, you know, like things that are just kind of, you know, more comfort foodish or something, but things that are served warm, you know, it's not even something that's like super like fattening and carby or anything, just, you know, things are served warmer. Whereas, you know, in the summer, you're going to have more, uh, you know, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. Um, and you're still going to have some fresh vegetables this time of year, because we are coming in on like, you know, our, um, ending harvest, um, from all the hard work of the summer. So it's not like you don't have fresh things now. It's just a little bit different, um, certainly from like those spring vegetables that are popping up uh, and, you know, the lighter fare that you're eating in the summer because, you know, the temperature is already nice and warm, uh, most likely wherever you are. So you don't need to eat the warming stuff, you know. Um, I mean, it's not like you can't, but, you know, generally you're more uh, drawn towards lighter and cooler flavors. So, um, so we'll start with cinnamon. Okay. And cinnamon, of course you can use, uh, any time of year. It's a really, really popular, um, spice, uh, in this country, uh, now. And I, I love cinnamon, but, um, it actually has some wonderful, uh, immune boosting properties. Uh, it can really go after viruses and bacteria. And of course it's really awesome for blood sugar as well. So having plenty of cinnamon in with uh, a dish that might be a little bit more um, uh, high in, uh, not even just sugar, but just in carbohydrates in general, the cinnamon can help to balance out your blood sugar. So there's a reason why, you know, those things are grouped together a lot of the time. Um, so let's go, uh, let's do ginger next. So that's got great immune boosting properties as well. It's going to be uh, great for if you have any kind of nausea, it really purifies your environment. Um, it's also antifungal. So, you know, in the, um, you know, in this time of year, because, you know, you're getting, um, 
we go back to school, uh, we tend to spend more time indoors. So, you know, we might be sharing toxins with people and then we end up, you know, getting sick a little bit more often. Uh, that's why we have, you know, this flu season, which really is kind of like a sugar season because it's not so much that, you know, like you're exposed to like germs and viruses mm -hmm. that are causing you to get sick. You're made of germs. We are made of all these different germs, but we get exposed to different toxins and everything. And then, you know, we... Uh, want to get rid of the toxins and end up feeling sick as a result. And then we share that, you know, like with other people, it's just kind of like, oh, well, I'm detoxing. You should detox too. This is what I'm detoxing from. So that's why like some people might get really sick while they're detoxing and this other person gets exposed and they don't get as sick and it's, you know, oh, well, their immune system was stronger. Well, yeah. in a matter of speaking, absolutely. Because your body, your immune system was boosted and already getting rid of some of those toxins. So it didn't have to do as much once it was exposed. So, you know, it's always great to have things like that. So, you know, the antifungal, antibacterial properties. Okay. Um, let's go. Let's see. We'll do nutmeg next. That's such a fabulous warming one. I love nutmeg. Okay. So nutmeg is pretty amazing. It's got antioxidants. It's awesome for your stomach and for your kidneys, even for your liver. Okay. So it's really great at helping you detoxify things naturally. If you've got bad tummy pain, you got like bad abdominal pain, it can really be helpful for that too. And it's also very calming. So you do, with this time of year, you know, you're getting all of your harvest stuff together and you're kind of bunkering down or hunkering down, bunkering down. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, but anyway, you know, you're getting ready for the winter. You know, we're supposed to uh, get ready to rest more in the winter and everything. Um, so you want something that's going to be more calming. You want something that's going to support your digestive system. Um, and you want to get rid of anything that you have, you know, built up over the year so that you can get rid of it and not spend the entire winter sick. Okay, that's that's the idea. So in the fall, you know, we're starting to get into that. You're like, okay, let's get rid of all of this nonsense so that, you know, we can make it through those colder months uh, where we may not be outside as often exposed to colder temperatures and everything so you're because your immune system does go down when you're colder so um yeah so we want to make sure that we can get rid of as much as we can so that's going to be another um thing you know nutmeg's going to be awesome for that on that same note clove okay clove is in so many different dishes and drinks and everything and desserts that we're serving up at this time of year and that again with antioxidants it packed with it. It's also great for things like um, headaches and toothaches, okay? Um, even um, arthritic pain. But again, it's antifungal. It's um, antiparasitic, okay? You definitely, you know, you want to be going through and getting rid of anything you can in your intestines. And of course we have, you know, parasite protocols and things like that. And you're going to find stuff like clove in a lot of those supplements. And that's why. So these things are naturally part of something that we want to eat this time of year. It's always been part of like our tr traditional fare this time of year. Um, and this is a big reason why. So, um, yeah, it's got, um, uh, Cariopaline and uh, eugenols that are just like, they, they act, I mean, they just go through your intestines and bam, um, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, with some of the, some of the things that we've got in there, um, let's see what other ones. So um, turmeric uh, is used uh, quite a bit, you know, that's, I mean, everybody, almost everybody knows that that's amazing for um, reducing inflammation. And that can be like, if you've got a crick in your neck, if your, your, your knee is bothering you, or, you know, if you have like belly pain or something, you know, and it's literally like any kind of inflammation, it can really be super helpful with that, especially when it's paired with like black pepper, they work synergistically, amazing. Um, you know, and that's, um, the curcumin is that main ingredient in there. Um, and of course it's going to be wonderful for the liver too. It's going to help to, um, detoxify the liver. So adding a little bit of that, um, and it makes a nice yellow color. It will also color your fingers yellow and, um, your countertops and stuff. So just, you know, use caution. <laughs> Been there. Um, another one that's used a lot this time of year is cardamom and that, uh, again, with the inflammation, it's really, really great for that. Um, it's also really wonderful at lowering blood pressure. Um, and when you have a higher blood pressure, that is a metabolic thing. Um, it's not necessarily a heart or cardiovascular related thing. It can lead to cardiovascular issues if it is, you know, not properly, um, taken care of, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it, that, that's a, a metabolic issue. Oh, um, circulation is another great one for the cardamom. So, 
uh, you know, just helping your body to be nice and healthy throughout this uh, time of year where you're preparing for the winter. Okay. Um, and then cumin, of course, is going to be great as well. Um, I like to put that in my chili. Uh, so that's going to help with um, diabetes, with obesity, and with different heart issues. It's packed with like phenols and flavonoids and um, alkanoids. Like there, there's all kinds of good stuff in there. Okay. So go ahead and put that on your stuff. Um, and then rosemary. So who likes to take rosemary and garlic and like, you know, put it all over a roast or something like that? Um, rosemary, you know, it's an evergreen, uh, you know, that's why it looks so pretty on like your Christmas charcuterie board, because it, you know, it looks like you just went and took your stuff, uh, you know, out from a pine tree outside. Uh, it has a very evergreeny smell, but it's also packed full of vitamins. Okay. It's antibacterial. It's, it's freaking awesome for your immune system. Um, and it's good for your hair too. So, um, you know, you, you go ahead and use that all you want. So that's always great. You know, anything that you can do to boost those kinds of things uh, over the winter and everything and in the fall, which, you know, I mean, uh, you know, most of the Christmas season is still considered fall. Uh, you know, we, we hit winter just a few days before Christmas and, you know, so, um, so a lot of that Christmas season where we're doing fun stuff like that and everything is still considered fall. I mean, these, it kind of like meshes together. I, you know, like you kind of feel like you're, uh, you know, like it's winter once December hits because like, it's like a Christmassy feeling. Um, but it doesn't actually hit till the end of the month, but then it's like, that's, cr that's Christmas winter. And then you have like actual winter after that. Right. And that starts in January. It's a totally different winter. So, um, uh, so on that note with garlic, Garlic, of course, you know, we're eating that uh, all times of year, all, all times. Uh, you know, I, I love me some garlic. You probably do know that it does have like antiparasitic uh, properties and things like that. So what you want to do, because there's something called Allison in there that you want to activate. So you want to like chop it up, you know, mince it or something um, and that will and let it sit for just a minute or so. And that will help to um, uh, activate all of that so that it can do all of those amazing things inside of your body. Okay. Um, let's see. Time is another great one. I know we, you know, uh, time is used a lot. Um, sage too, uh, during this time of year, uh, in, uh, all, all your different deliciousness, uh, you know, just like chop it up and throw it in there. And, um, you know, you're going to have things like vitamin C, magnesium, potassium are going to be in there. Um, so, you know, awesome for colds and flus. Uh, you know, so there, there's a reason, you know, herbs really are medicine, really all plants, uh, that we are consuming are more medicine than they are food. Of course, they have all of the, they're packed full of these nutrients and you can get these nutrients in your meats and your animal products as well. Um, and in, you know, a more bioavailable form. But when you're talking about herbs and spices like this, the concentration is very high, which is why we just use a little bit, you know, you're not, you know, you're, you're not using like a whole big thing. You're like, you're not going to make a whole salad, you know, out of like, I don't know, like sage or whatever. Well, no, you would never do that because don't, don't eat raw sage. Um, <laughs> you can cook that up. But, you know, like even just like basil or something, you probably wouldn't use just basil for an entire salad. Not, you know, um, I mean, maybe arugula like that would be that, that would be that would be an exception there. But in general, all of these plants, these herbs, they're packed full of this stuff because they're meant to be medicine for the body, which is just so amazing to me. You know, we were just provided with all of this amazingness right here, you know? And then of course, you know, the pharmaceutical companies have gone and taken that stuff and like stolen the constituents out of it and then like tried to make a profit on it. And of course that comes with side effects, which um, side note, side effects means poisoning effects because, you know, you don't get like, you know, if, if you were to get like a weird side effect from taking too much of a natural herb, it's because you poisoned yourself with too much of it. You know what I'm saying? So let's just call a spade a spade. Um, but anyway, I digress. All right. So I mentioned chili. So another thing that's fantastic to put into your chili, of course, would be cayenne, cayenne pepper. So you can use powdered, you can use the fresh, you know, I know uh, we still are getting, um, a, a harvest of, uh, hot spicy peppers, you know, and you still get, uh, those in, in the fall. So, you know, we still have those nice and fresh. They are definitely still seasonal depending on where you are. Um, you can probably even grab them, you know, grab them in the grocery store. Um, but those are antifungal, they're antiparasitic. I mean, put that right into your chili. Um, and you're going to, and you know, you can put some of the other spices in there as well. And that's just really just like a nourishing, uh, warming, it's warming your body and it's nourishing and it's literally medicine. Um, 
one last thing that I want to mention, of course, is, you know, because like I was saying, we want, we want to clear out our intestines of all of this nonsense because when your gut microbiome is healthy and balanced properly, you're less likely to be sick when you are exposed to something that could possibly make you sick. This, so, you know, this is a thing. So anything that you can do and all these things like, you know, oh, these have, these have been traditional things that we eat this time of year. And our ancestors were eating at this time of year and it was helping them do those things. Now, they, they may or may not have known. Um, I think I think that there's been some people with some really awesome wisdom throughout history. It may just not necessarily be written down, but people have been using these herbs and everything in these foods for thousands of years, uh, you know, eating them, consuming them, and they do have a medicinal effect. And there's like a whole rhyme and reason to why we eat them at certain times of year. So, you know, like nature doesn't really make mistakes. Okay. So if you follow nature, you're going to do well. But what is one of the most popular things this time of year? It would be pumpkins. So, you know, we have pumpkin flavored this, pumpkin flavored that. But the pumpkin itself, so the pumpkin seeds, uh, particularly when they are raw, you may or may not have heard, but those are really great at um, helping to pull um, parasites and fun fungi like candida, like all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, it aids in pulling that stuff out of your intestines and making your microbiome nice and happy. Okay. So that everything's working properly. I mean, literally, but I, if, if the gut's not working properly, if your microbiome in your gut is off, you're going to have some problems. I think you just, you're going to have some problems. Uh, and it's going to be problems that you would probably not even attribute to your gut, you know, like, oh, I'm sad. Everything sucks about my life and this is inflamed and my hip hurts and what have you. And, you know, if your gut microbiome is all messed up and all of the buggies inside of you are pulling all the strings, you're going to have problems. So there you go. You know, you have the raw pumpkin seeds and the pumpkin itself is, you know, has full of uh fiber and prebiotics and everything. So it actually helps you to poop. It helps to alleviate constipation. Um, I know that it's been recommended even for like dogs and horses and stuff, you know, to give, uh, give that to them when they seem to be having trouble going to the bathroom. So, you know, and this, I think we're just scratching the surface here, quite honestly. Uh, you know, I just kind of went through and wanted to jot down a bunch of stuff that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned, but this is not so please, you know, if you have anything to add, I am all ears. I would love to have a discussion about it. I mean, um, yeah, because nature really does know what's up when it comes to, you know, what's in season, what you should be eating and the benefits that it actually has on the body. So when you are enjoying whatever fall, you know, autumn fair you love to consume, uh, you are consuming something that was made in that flavor for a reason, you know, to help your body prepare for the upcoming winter. Isn't that fun? So fun. So, all right. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I'm so happy you came to Nourish Your Roots with me. I'm Jess Milner, a master nutritionist, and uh, I am so happy that you are here. And all right, if you would like to know uh, anything more, if you want to download my free resource guide, by all means, you're going to go to jess.deeprootedwellnessid.com slash resources, capitalize the R in resources. And um, if you are interested in doing an actual um, parasite cleanse, you can download my guide on is it time for a parasite cleanse you're going to go to jess.deeprootedwellnessid.com slash bugs and capitalize that b in bugs okay let me know uh how you enjoyed this please go ahead and keep the conversation going because this is so fun to learn more about you can probably even teach me something because i don't pretend to know it all okay uh please tell your friends share this podcast and leave me a five-star review. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that you are enjoying fall as much as I am. I'm going to be enjoying it even more once it actually starts to get a little bit chilly out there. But whatever's going on with you, soak up the last of the sunshine that you can. Uh, get, get in your vitamin D and just breathe in the cool fall breeze that's coming along. Have yourself a fantastic week, everybody.